Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first Tiger Family Talks for the semester. My name is Lindsay McCrory, and I have the pleasure of serving as the Manager of Parent and Family Programs. Our office is very excited to be partnering with you and uh, sharing information from LSU Residential Life, along with several of our current parents and panelists tonight, uh, to help you prepare for upperclassmen living. We've got a great crowd here, so I think it means that a lot of you have questions about living on or off campus. Uh, if you joined us for any of our previous webinars last semester, we wanna welcome you back. Thank you so much. We hope these have been helpful and informative. And if this is your first webinar, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you look at all of the webinars that we'll be hosting this spring. We've got lots of great information for you and your tiger. We're always trying to help support you as you navigate this college experience. So I wanna say hello to everyone joining us via Zoom and on Facebook Live. Hi guys and gals. Um, for those of you who are joining us on Zoom, I wanna go over just a couple of things. We have a chat section. So at the bottom of your screen, if you click more, you'll see the chat and you can use that to say hello. You can introduce yourself now if you'd like, say where you are from, where you're tuning in from, and just interact with us. You can insert emojis. You can you know, say when you really like something that someone shares during our presentation. Use it for fun and to engage with other families and our panelists and presenters. Now for the Q&A portion, uh, there's also another button at the bottom of your screen or maybe at the top, it's that gray taskbar and it says Q&A. So you can use that when you have a specific question for our office, for residential life, who controls our on-campus housing, or for any of our speakers today. So we definitely encourage you if you're on Zoom to use that Q&A feature. Now, questions can be related to tonight's topic of upperclassmen living, what that on or off campus apartment leasing process looks like, anything having to do with that. If you have unrelated questions, we definitely wanna help you as well. That's what our office is here for. So you can just email us directly and we'll get back to you with that answer. Our email is lsufamily at lsu.edu. Now, uh, I want to know just a little bit about where everybody is coming from today. And so we wanna just kind of get a feel for, you know, where you're at and what information you are looking for. So we have a poll up on the screen now. And so you should be able to answer these two questions. If you are on, on Facebook, you can just comment the responses to these two. Our first question, what year is your tiger? What classification, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, or graduate student? And then our second question, of course, is where is your tiger thinking about living? On or off campus, or are you unsure? So I know the questions are rolling in. I see, I see everybody filling out that poll. Thank y'all so much. Okay, so we've got a lot of good stuff. A lot of people unsure. It's kind of even, a lot of on campus right now. 96% freshmen, so a lot of newbies, that makes sense. This is the, this is the good time to tune in and, and let us know what questions you do have. It's the right time. I love everybody introducing yourself in the chat as well. Thank you so much. And also when you are commenting in the chat, if you click all panelists and attendees, then everyone can see your response as well. We have people coming from all over. This is awesome. On, we have people living on campus, off campus. We have people who are from in-state, out of state. But we mostly have all freshmen and just a couple of sophomores. So thank you all so much for joining us. OK, so it looks like everybody's answers are locked in. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to end that poll. And, uh, and I want to thank you all for sharing your answers, for sure. So our webinar really aims to provide you with the resources and info to make the right decision about where your tiger should live next year, whether that is on campus or off campus. We're gonna go over tips from both. As I mentioned earlier, we do have a panel of current parents and students to also share their perspective. And then we are joined by Residential Life, our team who coordinates on-campus housing and has a lot of really helpful information to share with you. So once again, if you have any questions as we go over this information for any of our speakers or presenters, go ahead and put that in the Q&A. If you're on Zoom and if you're on Facebook, go ahead and put that in the comments section. And I am going to stop my share for a moment.
and I am actually going to turn it over to our team in residential life. We are joined by Catherine David. She is our Associate Director for Communications and Development for LSU Residential Life. Thank you so much for joining us, Catherine. It's yours. No, oh, thank you, Lindsay. It's a pleasure to be here. We love visiting with all of our families um, about life on campus. And just like the poll showed, this is a lot of our current first year students who are looking at what they're going to, uh, where they're going to live next year. So we'll make sure to cover um, lots of information for you all today. I am, uh, again, I'm Catherine David. I have the privilege of working in residential life. I'm a two-time um, LSU alumna, and I'm also a proud Blake Hall alumna. So um, I'm, I've had my on-campus experience. My wonderful colleague, Mallory, is joining us in the chat today, and so, or in the Q&A. And so if you have any questions, um, you can put those there, and she'll be able to help you with that, or alert me to something that we need to talk about um, together on camera. So we're going to get started now. Uh, Lindsay graciously invited us to participate in this to talk to you guys a little bit about the apartment options on campus, um, what the leasing process looks like, and touring. Of course, if you're going to choose where to live, you want to see it, right? And in the current um, state of the pandemic, we have some really interesting ways for you all to see the housing options on campus. Um, and all, all of our parents who are joining us, if your tiger isn't able to join today, we're going to make sure that you have the information to pass on to your tiger. So the dates that they need to know, the processes they need to know. So we're going to um, get all that uh, for you today. But when, the important thing we want you to know is a lot of you said that you are freshmen or you have a, a a student that's a first year student and life on campus doesn't have to end after your first year. A lot of people think it's one and done, but that's just simply, that's simply not the case. Um, residential life, we have three on-campus apartment complexes on, um, for sophomores and beyond. They are East Campus Apartments, West Campus Apartments, and Nicholson Gateway Apartments. So we, uh, between those three complexes, about 2,700 sophomores and beyond choose to live on campus each year. So it's certainly not um, a one and done thing. So we, our, our apartments do typically fill quickly because we have 2,700 beds for upperclassmen. Um, and of course, you know, with a, with a population of 30,000 students, we can't house everyone, of course. But um, the people who want to live on campus, we're gonna work with you and make sure that we do everything possible to get a space for you um, so you can continue to enjoy that on-campus living experience and convenience, even as an upperclassman. You know, a lot of our students live on campus uh, beyond first year, like I said, and we think we know why. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna share that with you now. Isn't that the truth? Why live close when you can live on? Um, everything you just saw there is what life on campus is like for an upper class student. Um, you have Mathern's grocery store, you have Starbucks, you have um, health clinics, lots of retail options, lots of food options, Fat Boys Pizza, Torchies Tacos, Wendy's. You have all of that at your apartment um, community without ever having to use your car keys. You don't even need your car keys. You can just walk or scoot uh, to all these places. And so it really does make your time at LSU um, special because you know you spend 153 hours outside of the classroom. That's a lot of time that you'll spend a lot of that time at your home. And so we wanna make sure that where you live supports you getting across that graduation stage, right? That's the ultimate goal. So for that 153 hours outside of the classroom, um, when you're engaging with our different offices and participating in programs, we wanna make sure that when you go home to do classwork, homework, or to socialize with your friends, that you have a clean, safe, 
comfortable, convenient place to go. Um, and so that's why we offer these three apartment complexes for our students, for our sophomores and beyond. So I'll just kind of go through quickly some of the highlights of each community so you can start to see what will be best for you. Um, and then we'll go into the leasing process a bit too. So first we have East Campus Apartments. Um, it, it has one, two, and four bedroom apartments at, at ECA. It is on the east side of campus. And if your student is part of the honors community, just note that there is also an honors sophomore learning community housed in ECA and two of our buildings in ECA. So it's not the entire community, but it is a growing, um, growing in popularity. So our honors students um, can live in those apartments as well and continue that honors house experience that they maybe had in LaVille. Um, across campus is West Campus Apartments. Um, it's similar in style and layout to East Campus Apartments, but just a different location. And let me see. Um, and um, I'm getting notes from Mallory about all your questions, so I apologize for that interruption, but I'll make sure to address. I, there's a lot of questions about summer on here, so we'll make sure to address summer as well. Um, but West Campus Apartments is, again, on the west side of campus. It has two, three, and four bedroom apartments, and it um, typically remains open over the summer. Uh, Nicholson Gateway is our newest apartment community. It remains open for the summer. It has a unique option in that it has academic year leases, so nine and a half month lease to the end of May, or 12 month leases. So you could, um, you could live there year round if you wanted to. So East Campus and West Campus are typically um, academic year. So you would move in in August and then move out um, right after finals. Nicholson Gateway, you do get, you stay to the end of May. So that's a little bit of a difference there. And our Nicholson Gateway apartments do have a few more um, uh, apartment styles. So studios, one, two, three, and four bedroom apartments. Just to show you where they are, I mean, you just can't beat this convenience. So East Campus Apartments is um, on, obviously on the east side of campus by the UREC. Uh, West Campus is right, over, is right over here near the Five Dining Hall, really close to the library, the quad. Um, and then Nicholson Gateway is right along Nicholson Drive, across from Tiger Stadium, across from the track. Um, so really great locations. It just depends on what you're looking for um, as far as which one is the right fit for you. So we'll um, go through some of those differences in just a while as well. So of course, you've, you've heard a little bit about the apartments, but you want to see them, right? Well, right now, of course, um, it is a little hard to do in-person tours, but my wonderful colleague, Mallory, who's in, the, who's in our Q&A, oversees our tour operations and has put together a fantastic um, uh, agenda for you all to be able to tour the apartments from a safe uh, from a safe place in your home you don't have to come to campus if you don't if you don't want to or you can't so the first things we're gonna we're, we're gonna offer um we will be offering live tours so similar to this um you can register at lsu.edu slash housing tours those links will be up tomorrow um and that and that'll be available to register. And you can see East Campus Apartments, West Campus Apartments, or Nicholson Gateway Apartments on February 6th and February 13th. So we'll be doing live, live walkthroughs of, of some apartments and taking questions so you can see it that way. Also, we're gonna add to the website this week. It's really exciting. Mallory's been working on our virtual tour experience and we just got the final product uh, today and we're so excited. So we'll be adding virtual experiences to each community's webpage where you can just click through, kind of like a Google map. That's really exciting also. So you'll have lots of ways to be able to tour without physically coming um, to campus or coming to the buildings. So how to lease is a, is a big question we get. So the process that most of you went through as an incoming first year student, it's um, pretty similar to what you'll experience leasing for next year. So, so these are the important dates. Um, these are kind of the, the anchor dates, and then I'll go down to some of the specifics next. So all students can start the application process February 2nd. So that's coming up really soon. You got, you've got an email from us um, today, Monday, January 26th, um, with information about the leasing schedule. And that also is available at lsu.edu slash live on. So 
February 2nd is a big day, so make sure you mark that in your calendar. Parents, make sure you tell your tigers. This is when the application opens. You can search for roommates, get in roommate groups, or roommates individual leases, um, so you don't have to worry about, about that. So we do it kind of as a, a tiered system. So our current apartment residents do have priority to reserve their same space or move to a different space within the apartment communities, and then we open it up to first year students, current first year students. So. Um, while February 2nd is an important day, you don't have to get on right then. I think as long as you complete the application and get those roommates lined up before it's your apartment selection day, you'll be okay. So for a selection, uh, actual apartment selection, our current residents begin January 15th and our current first year students begin March 8th. So that's a big day. March 8th is really the big day for our current first year students because that's when you can um, select your apartment, Put your roommates in your, into the different bedrooms in the apartment and you secure your apartment space by paying $250 advanced rent and it's non-refundable. So that again that's advanced rent though so it counts towards your rent in the fall so it's not a fee or anything on top of your rent it's just that advanced rent that is non-refundable. So if you decided to live elsewhere um, that the, the advanced rent would not be refunded to you. So let's look at the breakdown um, a little bit more in depth so you can see some of the exact dates and how I talked about the kind of that that priority system. So again, February 2nd is when the application opens for those housekeeping items. You know, agree to the contract, look for roommates, get in roommate groups. And then we start with February 15th and 16th. Our current apartment residents can reserve their exact same room. And then the next phase, 17th and 18th, is when they can pull in their roommates, right? So they can place their roommates into available beds. So this is really important for our current students in our, in our apartments. You don't want to miss this if you want your exact same room because if you don't select your exact same room, then somebody else can go ahead and put a roommate in there or select it. So we want to make sure that you don't miss this if you want to keep that same apartment. Um, moving on through February, you can see it's just our current students select their different, um, they can move across communities. And then uh, again, March 8th is, I call, we call it all in apartment leasing. So that's when all current um, first year students and all current LSU students, so people who don't currently live on campus, um, can log into our system and see what's available. And the room selection process or the apartment selection process is what you experienced when you selected your residence hall room. So you will be able to see what's available by community and select those, select an apartment, add your roommate group, and then um, secure that apartment with $250 advanced rent. So this, again, this schedule is available on lsu.edu slash live on. And so that'll, that'll be really helpful for you to um, take a look at and for parents to share with your tigers. So one last thing before um, I let you go, I wanted to make sure you all knew about this helpful page um, on our rent rates page on our website. So at the bottom here, you'll see we have comparing on and off campus apartments. And so whether you're looking on or off campus, uh, leasing pressure from apartment communities uh, um, is going to start to heat up and then in this next couple of months. This is when apartment communities really start marketing. They start trying to pressure students into signing leases. Uh, be careful about what you're signing students and parents reiterate to your students. Make sure they read everything they um, have in front of them before signing it. We've had a lot. We've had students unfortunately sign leases when they thought they were just signing up for um, you know to get more information. So and again not us, um, other apartment communities. So make sure that your students um, know what they're signing before they before they sign those contracts. Um, you know, we want to use this helpful list whether you're living on or off campus. And so this is just thing, these are things to look for as you go on tours, as you ask questions. So you can see, talk about safety. You know, our apartments on campus, we have LSU PD on site. So we, our response time is dramatically faster than um, than some of some other complexes. Of course, we have our 24 hour front desks. We have our live in staff, even in our apartment communities. So we do still continue to have resident assistants, graduate residence coordinators and residence coordinators in all of our apartment communities. Some of the features, of course, you want to make you want to check that bus route, make sure where you're living is on the bus route if you have transportation or if you don't, because um, that's that's been really helpful for our students who choose to live on and off to make sure that they do have that that um, that bus access. All inclusive rent is another big feature to look for, you know, our, our rent rates at LSU, uh, what you see 
that's what you pay. It includes um, wired internet, wireless internet, cable TV, you know, trash, water, electricity, everything. There's no additional fee for furniture or anything like that. So we, um, we want to make sure that you're asking questions when you're touring properties about what are the additional charges? Is there an extra charge for furniture? Is there extra charge, you know, for parking under a covered um, space, things like that. So those are important features to ask for because those little, y'all know those little charges can nickel and dime you and add up very quickly. And when, when you do that, when you compare apples to apples, yeah. we're confident that the rent rates in, um, we're confident that the rent rates you see um, of ours are a great value. Let me see. Let me go ahead and uh, share the screen with you guys. Here we go. So let me go back up so you can see the rent rates page. And I'm on, I'm on the comparing on and off section where this is, again, this is just that list of helpful things for you to ask about as you're touring properties and considering where you're going to live um, in your later years at, um, at LSU. <clears throat> we talked about leases as, as far as nine and 12 month leases. So again, on campus, we do have those options um, for both uh, academic year leases and 12 month, 12 month leases. Another big thing that our students really talk about is that all of our properties on campus are for LSU students only. So you know that your neighbor or your potential random roommate, your hallmates are LSU students. Um, they could be sophomores, juniors, seniors, graduate students, vet med, law students, but um, you know that it's an LSU student next to you. So that's a very important feature that our students have, have really um, talked to us about as, a, as, a, as an important feature. So this is a great resource. I hope you'll take a look at that on and off, um, on and off checklist so you can um, use that on your apartment search. But just know that, again, life on campus doesn't end after your first year. From We always say from orientation to graduation, there is a home for you on campus. And we want to make sure that you find the best fit for you. So our team is standing by. Um, our tour staff is available in our new tour center. It's the old president's house. It's a little house right in front of the Barnes and Noble bookstore. And we, we have a model residence hall room there, um, but our staff is there from um, 8.30 to four o'clock, Monday through Friday. And you can come and ask questions about the apartments and we'll certainly kind of help you figure out what would be the best fit for you, in addition to those touring options I mentioned. So we're excited to have you on campus um, and I'll take a look in the chat and start um, answering those questions for you guys. But Lindsay, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you so much, Catherine. I know you provided a really great information about the on-campus housing and apartment leasing process. So lots of great details. As Catherine mentioned, if you have questions for Catherine or Mallory from their residential life team, go ahead and put those in the Q&A on Zoom, or you can comment on Facebook as well. We'll be happy to help. So we talked about uh, living on campus and apartment housing. I know that some of your tigers may be interested if you have a Greek tiger in living in a sorority or fraternity house. So I am gonna share my screen again to show just a couple more things. So uh, if your tiger is living uh, or thinking about upperclassmen living on campus, but in Greek housing, uh, that is not controlled by a residential life team. So you would need to contact or your tiger would need to contact the chapter advisor or president directly for more information. Uh, you know, students, some sororities and fraternities will allow tigers to live on campus as early as their second semester of their freshman year. It just depends on uh, several different factors. And if you have any specific questions, we did go ahead and give our Greek friends the heads up. So you can email greeks at lsu.edu and our Greek life team will be happy to assist if you're thinking about Greek housing as an upperclassman uh, living option. Now, another thing is off campus. So I know we had a good little third of y'all, good chunk that are thinking about living off campus. There are definitely benefits, as Catherine mentioned, to living on campus versus off campus. You can't go wrong. It's up to you. It's up to your tiger. And so we're, we're going to share just a little bit of information about that. And really, our, our panelists can dive in to give more information. But before we go over that with our panel, I want to point out two specific links. So offcampushousing.lsu.edu. We're going to put that in the chat. It's a really helpful resource. It has a list of 
tons of off-campus housing options around the LSU area. It, this website is controlled by LSU um, and, and a vendor that we work with. And so students can actually sign in to this portal through their MyLSU username and password and, and set up an account. Uh, there are a couple of features I wanna point out. So I'm going to switch and share to that website. So if you're looking at this website, you can see we have the sign in, sign up. You can take a look at that. Housing has a list of the different housing options available. So let me click there for you guys. Uh, you can see proximity, you know, details, how many bedrooms, all of that stuff. Roommates, your tiger can actually sign in with her My LSU ID and fill out a roommate portal profile to uh, look for roommates if they are needing assistance with that. And then I want to point out just a couple of resources on that page. Go back to the homepage of offcampushousing.lsu.edu. If you see here the LSU off-campus living and click on click here for information, there are a couple of things that are specifically helpful if you're thinking about living off campus. And I know I've seen a couple of questions in the chat and on the Q&A. So this housing search checklist, in addition to that uh, link that we provided on Residential Life's website, here's another thing to think about for housing comparison and, and what you're looking for, what your tiger is looking for. So that's a helpful resource. In addition, finding a roommate is another big thing, you know, that your tiger, if they choose to live um, with others, is, is going to need to think about. And if they don't already have that figured out, here are some things to consider. So those are just two helpful resources. I really think that this is a great, uh, a great platform. So check out offcampushousing.lsu.edu if you and your tiger are thinking about living off campus next year. Now, we also have another resource that's on the Facebook page. So if you are on Facebook, I encourage you to check out LSU Parents and the, the whole name of the group. It's a pretty long one. It's right there. Uh, but that's, that's the group. They have about 6,000 total members and you can join. It's a public group. Anybody can join that. It's a great place if you're, you or your tigers, you know, looking for a roommate, you want to sublease, either you have the apartment to sublease or housing to sublease or you're looking for something to sublease maybe over the summer. I know we've gotten a couple of questions about summer housing. Uh, people also use this to post some privately owned housing options as well, which is another thing. A lot of the big apartment complexes are the ones, as Catherine mentioned, that do a lot of the marketing and are really pushing, maybe putting flyers on your tiger's car right now or, uh, or really, really hitting the marketing up. But the private housing off-campus off options are also an option and something to look into. So this is a great uh, platform if you are on Facebook to be able to ask other people questions, get opinions about you know, specifically what they think is best. And if you're a member, if you're a Tiger family member and you're on the LSU Parents page or maybe the Out of State Students and Tigers page or um, maybe also the, the LSU Parents and Students, there are tons of groups. Uh, I've seen a lot of chatter about this going on in the past month. As you can see, it really is the time to start thinking about it. It's never too early, um, but as Catherine mentioned, you don't want to jump in too soon. So that's where I want to segue actually over to our panel. I'm going to stop share again so you can see their faces in just a moment. And uh, I, I want our panelists to share today with you their perspective. I know that sometimes the most beneficial you know, advice that you're going to get, tips about truly whether you and your tiger should live on campus, off campus, and what those benefits are is going to come from our current students and our current parents. And so um, I'm excited for them to introduce themselves and share a lot about what factored into their decision and what they enjoy about the process. So I'm first going to ask them all to turn on their cameras and our panelists. And I am going to start with Daria. Daria is a uh, student. She is a senior living on campus. So Daria. I'm Daria. I am a senior at LSU and I live at Nicholson Gateway on campus. Thank you so much. We're also joined by Aiden. Aiden Bowers is also a student living on campus. Hey y'all, I'm Aiden. I'm actually a freshman and I do live in North Hall. Thank you, Aiden. Okay, so we have a few parents joining us today. I know Carmen Hughes is on the call. Carmen's a parent who has a tiger living on campus. I do. Good afternoon or good evening, everyone. Carmen Hughes out of the Atlanta or Mableton, Georgia. 
and uh, we have a daughter, Maya, who is a sports administration major, and she's been in Nicholson Gateway in Riverbend for the last two years. And the year before, her sophomore year, she was in the um, West Campus apartment. Thank you so much. We're also joined by Jenny. Jenny's tiger lives off campus. Hey everyone, um, this is Jenny Marty. I'm in Lana Lakes, Florida. <clears throat> Forgive me, uh, fighting through a cold right now. Um, my daughter's a sophomore and as Lindsay said, she lives off campus in the lodges. Thank you so much, Jenny. And then finally, we have Ari. Ari's uh, tiger lives off campus as well. Hi everyone, my name is Ari Clay. Um, I have a sophomore engineering major, lives off campus. Like Lindsay said, he did live on campus last year. He made a decision that he wanted to live off campus this year, so he's enjoying it so far. And he's in ION. Thank y'all so much. Okay, so we're going to jump right into the questions. For everybody watching us today, if you have questions for any of these panelists, go ahead and put it in the Q&A or the comments on Facebook. We have some pre-prompted questions and then we'll have plenty of time to answer your questions at the end today, including those for Residential Life Team, if you have some specifically for them. So our first question to our panelists, what resources did you utilize to find you or your tiger's housing? And Carmen, I'll start with you. How did Maya find out she wanted to live on campus? So when her freshman year, Nicholson Gateway was under construction and almost completed. So I think she knew in freshman year when she saw that huge complex that that's where she wanted to be at some point. Um, but she did go through the campus facilities and housing during the process um, her sophomore year and then did not move into uh, Nicholson until her junior year now because she's a senior. But we toured, uh, we looked at various apartments on campus. But she went Thank through the you. process, yeah. Perfect, awesome. Jenny, how did you guys decide for um, Quinn to live off campus? Well, really, she, t she went and toured a, um, several places with her roommates or she had friends, um, mostly through her sorority who already lived off campus. So she knew, you know, what the apartments looked like. She knew what the safety features were. Um, she knew roughly who was going to be living, you know, in which apartment complex. And ultimately, um, it, it was just either booking tours or already knowing because she had already visited their apartments. Thank you. Daria? Yeah, so I basically always knew that I wanted to stay on campus just because I liked being really close to everything. And when I moved into Nicholson Gateway my sophomore year, it was brand new construction that had just been finished. And I thought it was beautiful. I really liked the fact that it was a brand new complex on campus. So those factors really played into me knowing that I wanted to live here. Thank you, Ari. So I kind of fall in the same bucket as Jenny where Alan made the decision and he's like, hey, I've toured a couple of complexes. The decision came down to what complex is closer to campus so that they can get walk to, um, to the campus and walk in and around the campus. So that was kind of the whole decision process for Alan. He toured a couple of places and they made the decision. He and his um, roommates from freshman year and they just made the decision based off of convenience of travel and location. Thank you. And then Aiden, I know that you will be beginning your process. So what resources are you going to utilize to decide whether to live on or off campus? I've actually been doing this today. Um, I look at like the LSU website to see like compare where I want to live. And for me, like I want to stay on campus because I am from out of state and I don't want a car yet. So I want to stay on campus where I have the Tiger Transit and like just take a advantage of all the opportunities and like resources I have here. So I've been just using the LSU website and comparing like the amenities and like where they are on campus and just deciding there. Thank you. So uh, some of you started to kind of touch on this, but I wanted to know what were probably the most important factors or deciding factors um, to, to determine if your tiger was going to live on or off campus. So Ari, you want to start first? Um, I think for Alan, he just wanted a little bit more independence um, and kind of get that feel of what it what it what it's like to really live out on your own and living with his roommates. So that was kind of one of the main uh, reasons why he chose off campus housing. And the other reason, like I said, you know, 
they chose the, that particular um, complex based on convenience of still having all of the amenities of, you know, kind of having that on campus feel to it. So, yeah. Thank you. Jenny, what about you? I don't think there was ever a question. <laughs> she, um, she said she was going to live off campus sophomore year. She briefly looked at living in the sorority house, but there weren't any um, rooms available. So she, um, she, it was either going to be the sorority house or off campus. So she pretty much made up pretty quick. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, and Carmen, I know we've talked about this before, but what were some of the factors that were most important to you about Maya living on campus? Yeah, I wanted her to live on campus because she didn't have a car, so she didn't have transportation, and she had a, a, a job um, working in the athletic ticket office, and so she needed to go between classes and, and on campus. And so we tried to find the best, and this is, you know, I, I guess a, a, a phrase I've, I've coined, but an on-campus, off-campus experience. So she lives in an apartment, um, has a freedom and flexibility of the apartment, but she's on campus, she has the amenities of campus, um, but it was also important for me that, that um, she was in an environment that was maintained by, um, I think Catherine mentioned the LS, LSU police. So we had the resources uh, of the LSU um, package, if you will, in her campus housing. So that was really important for her, but she still had the independence of living in an apartment um, with a roommate. Thank you. And then Daria, what about you? What factors went into your decision or what was most important? So for me, I lived in Erez Hall my freshman year and then basically I fell in love with the convenience, kind of like I said before, just being very close to everything. And I knew that I wanted that same easy access, I guess you could say, like I just wake up in the morning and I'm able to get ready, walk to class, and for me personally, as a Com D major, I've had a lot of classes in Hatcher Hall, which isn't far at all from Nicholson Gateway, which is where I live. So I'm able to get to a lot of my classes really quickly. And that's been really beneficial for me living in Nicholson Gateway. Okay, that's awesome to hear. Thank you for sharing. Parents, I want to know specifically about your feelings. Uh, how involved were you in your Tigers selection process. I know we've got students and parents and families joining us on today's webinar, but um, you know, how much did you hold their hand and, and kind of help and, and oversee what the leasing process, whether it's on or off campus, would look like? Um, Ari, we'll start with you. So um, I have to be honest in saying that Alan, Alan kind of took charge of the whole process. I didn't do a whole lot. Um, <laughs> if I'm very yeah. honest, it, it I think I signed a lease and that was it. Like he, he did everything. So he went through the, he did the touring on his own. He, he figured out what was important for him to have as a you know, with respect to housing, whether they liked it, you know, him and his roommates liked the, the apartment overall or disliked it. I had very little input in it. Um, I was given a lease and said, here, mom, sign this. And I just signed it. I trusted him. So that was that. Sorry, <laughs> but that, that's kind of, that was a process. <laughs> no, that's good. I'm glad that he was responsible. And, and um, I'm sure that you read that lease though thoroughly to make sure that it, it made sense. I'm sure you were a co-signer on that one. Do you have any <laughs> tips for the lease process, leasing process or? Um, so my husband read the lease thoroughly and after he signed, I signed he was tasked with reading through it, making sure, you know, all the I's were dotted, T's were crossed. It's an individual lease. We didn't have to worry about, it was all inclusive. So that was a good thing as well. So we didn't have to worry about him being taken for granted, you know, taking advantage of him, sorry. But yeah, that was, that was basically it in a nutshell, Lindsay. Thank you. Jenny, I saw you shaking your head very rapidly. So I'm sure you had a similar experience. Yeah. It did. Ari just pretty much it described everything we went through as well. Um, she's the one that did everything. And then, you know, my husband co-signed the lease and everything. Um, it was furnished. So that was a big thing for, for her and for us. You know, we're out of state. So not having to move a lot of furniture was very helpful. Um, but yeah, she, 
she's the one that handled the whole process and you know she knew where she wanted to be and she knew what she was looking for so again you know like Ari said we just trusted her that she was making the right decision that's good to hear you have very responsible tigers I love that <laughs> uh Carmen I know you were part of the process too what was it like for Maya how much did you were you involved same I guess we do have very responsible tigers um I I wasn't really involved um, with her selection itself. I think that, um, again, when we came for soft, sophomore year for family weekend, we, we were able to tour some of the apartments in Nicholson Gateway all the way from the, I think we started out looking at a studio and then we looked at a one bedroom and the two bedroom. And so we stopped at two, I think it goes up to four. Um, I was rooting for a studio because that was the most, uh, um, the least expensive that didn't work for her. So we went to a two bedroom. Um, and, but she's, she went through the roommate process. She went through the selection process. They do go very quickly. So she knew she had to really um, be focused on making a selection pretty quickly. And I do like, I will say, I, I like the fact that it is included in her fee bill. So it's, it, so it's just like, it is student housing, um, just as an apartment. So I like that it's in her fee bill. That is a good thing to note. That is very, definitely helpful. Daria, you live on campus in Nicholson Gateway as well. So um, how involved were your family, your parents in the process? And then um, as far as the leasing process to give a student perspective, um, since it sounds like a lot of students have done this on their own, was it easy to navigate? Could you figure it out on your own? Yeah, it was really easy for me to navigate. Um, there's really specific instructions that are sent to you and all you have to do is just follow the instructions and it's all on the housing portal. It was really easy for my roommate and I to be able to coordinate our living space, plan everything out. My parents, I kept them updated on what was going on, but for, for the most part, me and my roommate like took care of everything ourselves. Um, it was really easy. It wasn't difficult at all. And um, just making sure you kind of time management goes into it too, like making sure you pick out where you want to live in a timely manner so things don't fill up too quickly. Those things really, um, that all played a factor in us being able to get our rooms and have easy access and things like that. Okay, good to hear. Uh, so it sounds like what all of our panelists are saying is that maybe trust your tiger, kind of help and be there to assist, but, um, but, they, but they know what they're doing and likely are already having these conversations. So uh, you just mentioned roommates, Daria, so I'd love for you to touch base on this. How did you find your roommates? So my roommate was, we actually did not know each other before. So on the housing portal, I picked a space in Canal Hall at Nicholson Gateway where there was one room left in a two bedroom, two bathroom apartment. So we got to know each other. We met the first day we both moved in and like to say we were randoms, we really hit it off. I wasn't really expecting it. I was a little bit nervous about living with someone that I hadn't met before, but we get along really well. Um, we're very compatible. And now we're in like the same sorority and everything too. So it's really been a great experience and um, sometimes taking a chance. And even if you don't know the person you're necessarily gonna be living with, sometimes that change can be a good thing. So I've had a really good roommate experience up to this point. I am so happy to hear that. And we did just get a question. So we're answering that live from SW um, because it has been a little bit more difficult for students, especially our current freshmen to meet other students, you know, with the pandemic um, and to, to find a roommate. So I'm glad to hear that. Did you fill out any sort of profile or, you know, were there any, how did you get connected with that person or was it truly, truly random as you've said? I did the basic um, profile on, um, the housing website that it's just kind of you fill out your basic information and say a few things about yourself, your interests, things like that. But for the most part, we didn't know 
much about each other. Um, we communicated via social media a few days before we moved in, just to kind of have one conversation before we moved in together, touch base about getting things for the apartment, things like that. But we didn't have that in person, like truly interacting with each other in person, that experience until we moved in. But it went really well. I'm glad to hear that's a positive story. Aiden, how was it with your roommate finding experience? Um, actually, I didn't have a roommate for fall semester because my roommate originally dropped. Um, but what I did was I went through the housing portal, I did the survey, and then um, if you match over 60%, LSU got, will match you, and then you can talk to them, and then you guys can still be like, oh, we want to be roommates, and then you guys will accept each other as a roommate. Um, but I do have a roommate now, and she was random because not a lot of people um just go in spring so I did get a random roommate and she's awesome I haven't had a bad experience with any of my roommates yet so yeah that's fabulous to hear Carmen uh what was Maya's experience like finding a roommate sorry um same she actually went through the the roommate portal and um selected her roommate and so I think well, it was matched with a roommate, but I will say for last year, I think she chose the room. Uh, the room was priority to the roommate, if that makes sense. She wanted uh, a room facing Nicholson and she wanted to look at Tiger, Tiger Stadium. So my backdrop is actually a picture that I took of her um, from her room actually uh, last year. That's my, my backdrop. So I think that for her, the, the environment and looking at Tiger Stadium and the PMAC was important. And uh, her roommate, they, they hit it up. She was a, she was a junior and uh, the roommate was, was a senior. So they hit it off great. That is awesome. That is definitely a selling point. Who would not want to wake up to see Tiger Stadium right across, across oh, the exactly. street? I love it. Jenny, what about uh, Quinn? How did she find her roommates for off-campus housing? She had originally, she was going to live with two of her sorority sisters, so they signed a lease for a three bedroom and one of them ended up um, not coming back to LSU. She stayed, because of the pandemic, she stayed in New Mexico. So she and her roommate um, actually got assigned a random person. And it was funny because it was already that girl's apartment because um, they do individual leases on the bedrooms. So she, she knew her, her sorority sister but they didn't know the girl that they were moving in with. And it actually turned out to be very, very good. She was a very good roommate <coughs> and it was her senior year and she just recently graduated. So um, I actually just got, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we could come back, no worries, Jenny. We'll come back, okay. Uh, Ari, what about Alan's experience? So Alan's experience was a little bit different. Um, his roommates that he had in his freshman year when he did on-campus housing, they hit it off really well and they just stayed roommates. So they all kind of made this decision like, hey, we're going to go out and we're going to do off-campus housing. So they kind of made a decision to still stay together, even in on um, off-campus housing. And they get along, they're like brothers, you know, they get on each other's nerves. They, but, you know, they look out for one another. And I, I really like that about you know, love that about their their um, relationships that they all look out for each other. Um, even with his friends outside of his roommates, I mean, it's just a really close knit group of friends that they all look out for each other and just make sure that they're holding one another super accountable. So for parents that are kind of worried about my, you know, my child living off campus, um, what could go wrong? Um, knock on wood, we haven't had that problem as of yet because they really do look out for each other. So that's kind of been our experience with that. Awesome. Um, since I already have you on the on, I have a question that we want to answer live from Argel, and it's: Does off-campus students have the same access to transit? So um, you know, and I know that he lives the Ion, so he maybe walks, but um, you know, maybe if you can talk about that. And then also, how do you feel about the security of Ion? Um, they do have security. I'll answer the security question first. So I have seen security walking around that complex or inside the complex. I've visited there two or three times. So I've seen security in that complex. Um, 
walking around. So I feel good about that. As far as transportation goes, like I said, they're literally right across the street from the campus. So I'm sure if they still wanted to, you know, have access to target trails or what have you, they could still use that as well. I'm not really sure, but they, they walk everywhere, you know, so no one has a car as of yet. So that was kind of the really important thing for them to make sure that they still had, you know, that accessibility to campus within a five minute walk or less. Yeah, I think that's a great point. So you're right, Tiger Trails does visit uh, uh, several of the off-campus housing locations. And so that's just an important thing to think about on your checklist if your Tiger is going to live off-campus is, you know, is it on the bus route? And, um, you know, how will they be commuting to campus? Will they have a car? Will they be, uh, you know, taking the bus? A lot of the the local area, you know, close to campus have access and are on the bus route, but that's definitely something to ask the apartment complex if you're thinking about living off campus. Jenny, uh, I hope you're feeling better. Throwing it back over to you. Yeah, I'm so sorry about that. So, no, um, you're fine. So what about security, um, you know, where your tiger lives and then also is she on the bus route? What is she using? Okay, yes, um, the lodges is on the bus route. There's a tire trail stop, in fact, right outside her apartment. So, um, she's in Lodges and in Arlington and Red Oak are all right there. So they're all on the tire trails um, stop. <clears throat> and as far as security, um, the Lodges is gated. So um, they have to have a transponder to get in or, you know, you know a code or whatever. Um, so, uh, you know, she, she does have a car, but there's the, the gated and I've seen security as well. So um, she hasn't complained ever about security. And um, like I said, you know, it's all gated. So unless you have a, a code or a transponder, you can't really get in. Thank you so much for sharing. While I have you too, um, I wanted to ask specifically, you said that I think she's in a furnished uh, apartment. So that's something also that if your tiger is living off campus, we do encourage uh, families and students to think about, do they want, you know, furnished or unfurnished? So uh, why does she make that decision to do furnished apartment? <laughs> Um, so we wouldn't have to supply the furniture. And um, so, you know, we're 10 hours away. So we wouldn't have to drive, <clears throat> you know, a big U-Haul um, four states away and we, or, you know, God forbid, have to buy something in Baton Rouge and, and have it, you know, moved in or whatever. So um, <clears throat> it was more convenient. And for us, it was more affordable for her to already have a furnished apartment. Ari, do you want to share about uh, Alan's experience, furnished, unfurnished? Oh, well, yeah. Alan, they, they came, the apartment was fully furnished. In fact, um, they brought in extra, an extra sofa for some reason or another, but they ended up having like two sofas, um, two living room chairs, um, a coffee table, end table, I believe, and like uh, bar stools for their little countertop bar seated area in their apartment. All, everyone had their beds. I think it's also important to note that each one of the rooms, each one of their rooms, their bedrooms, their key to their bedroom, no one else can get in. So like if they left for the day or they were gonna be gone and they wanted, you know, they had something of value in there, or they, you know, just wanted to keep their room secure. They didn't have to worry about anyone going in the room or having access to their bedrooms each person gets their own key for their bedroom specifically. So no one can go in and out of your bedroom without, you know, you have to give them the key in order for them to get in or out of your bedroom. And that same key, you need that key to get into the building, to get into the garage. So it's super secure in that respect. Um, as you know, when you're thinking about security and when you're thinking about an, uh, an apartment being furnished. And for us, we're seven hours away. So same like Jenny, um, I, I wasn't gonna buy furniture to travel seven hours <laughs> to furnish this apartment. So that was really important. <laughs> I love that. You're right. You're right. Um, I know Daria and Daria and Carmen, I'm sure it was the same. You know, that's a big benefit of living on campus in those apartments is they come furnished and you don't have to worry about a bus route. So definitely some benefits with staying on campus. Um, I'd, I'd love to, I guess, ask you guys, like, what did you do for meal plans? I've seen that a few times in the, uh, in the Q and A. So, um, 
for Daria, uh, can you talk about, did you have a, a meal plan while you've lived on campus or, you know, how did you handle food and stuff? So freshman year, I did the meal plan when I was in a residence hall. Sophomore year, I did the meal plan for a while, but then um, I think the the second semester of my sophomore year, I didn't use the meal plan anymore just because um, like I wanted to learn how to start trying to make food myself and things like that. So, um, and then like right next to me, there's torchies, all these food places and things like that. So um, the meal plan was really nice though when I was on it freshman year and some of sophomore year, but um, I didn't have it the whole time. Um, that I was living on campus and I'm not using it now. Okay, good to know. Um, Jenny, you know, or Ari, either one of y'all, did your Tigers have meal plans since they did live off campus? We do offer commuter meal plans if students are interested in that, but what did yours do? Jenny, you can go first. No, she wanted to be able to cook and she wanted to be able to do things for herself. So having a meal plan was never a, a thought that she had. She, like I said, she, she likes to cook and she wanted to cook more, so. Okay, awesome. That would be true for us as well. He, he likes cooking, so um, that was important for him to be able to cook his food and, you know, want to show out for his roommates too, because he gets a kick out of cooking dinner for them, you know, at least once or twice out of the week. So that's always good. <laughs> so I love no, that. Not one a meal plan at all. <laughs> No, it's great to hear that so many tigers are cooking. So that was another question we've gotten. Uh, I see a question well, in the. And I just yes, please. Know, we did, I'm sorry. We did supplement though. Um, so with with the apartment for Maya, of course, she liked to cook, and she had the grocery store right downstairs with Darren, and then the the neighborhood Walmart. But we did supplement with Paw Points. So I think we had um, 800 Paw, paw Points that she could go to the anywhere in the Union. There, I think there are a few places in Riverbend um, that take the paw points. So um, she would just have to use them up every semester, which typically wasn't a problem. But that did give her some other options. Thank you. That's good. You're right. And, and those um, commuter meal plans, they come, some of them come with meal swipes, but some of them just come with the paw points, as you're mentioning too, which has been helpful um, for flexibility for students, especially, you know, if we were able to return back to, you know, in-person classes. A lot of our freshmen may not be as used to this, but um, when, when Tigers do live on or off campus, you know, they pretty much are in classes kind of all day and don't have as much time, especially if they live off campus, to go home and then come back. So it's nice to have the flexibility to be able to eat on campus and the paw points are great for that eating on campus. Um, I did get a, a question that so we'll answer live um, from Claire is, can you use scholarships to pay for off-campus apartments? And Claire, the answer to that is uh, if you have a, a refund that you're going to get from the bursar's office, you know, from your fee bill, if you have extra funds, they'll direct deposit that if you have that set up into your account. And yeah, you can use those funds wherever you want. Uh, Jenny or Ari, do you have either of you have experience with getting a refund check and using it towards the off-campus apartments? I answered this in the chat as well, but um, yeah, because we she has um, scholarships and we also have a Parents PLUS loan. So whatever the refund is, that's what she uses to pay her rent. Perfect, thank y'all so much. Uh, Shalita is asking, oh, anybody else wanna jump in? Shalita is asking, she says, my daughter is currently in a dorm and, or a residence hall. She would like to rent an off-campus apartment. Is there a process for off-campus living? And the truth is that there's not. So what we've shared today is, uh, you know, really students can utilize a variety of different platforms and kind of research on their own of what they want, but there's no set, you know, way they need to notify the university if they're going to be living off-campus next year. Um, up to their decision. I know a lot of people have been asking, can you stay on campus in the residence halls? And we've answered that question. Uh, yeah, you can. So you don't, you can live. Um, we'd love, as, as Catherine and Mallory have mentioned, we'd love for the, your Tigers to live on campus for longer if they're interested. So we've, at, we've answered a lot of questions. Please now, keep those. Um, Lindsay, can oh, I sorry. Interrupt? I'm sorry. I just wanted to make sure, because this is a pretty recent change for maybe some of oh, our sorry. Um, Tiger families the past year or so that, you know, sophomores and beyond only live in our on-campus apartments. Um, the, the only opportunity um, 
for upperclassmen to live in a residence hall would be in in LaVille Honors House occasionally. Um, but most of those honor students now live in the ECA honors living community. Um, so just want to make that clear that residence halls, first year students, apartments, sophomore and beyond, because that is a change for um, some of our families who have uh, tigers who live with us in residence halls for three, four years. Yes, thank you so much. I'm very glad that you clarified that. Hope everybody caught that for sure. Um, if anybody has any other questions, I know that we're, we're nearing the end of our time, but we want to get all those answered. Y'all have been um, asking our teams tons of stuff, and these are all really great. So I encourage everybody to check out what has been answered in the Q&A. Um, but I, I just want to ask our panelists and, you know, our residential life team, do you have any other last minute tips, advice, you know, quick words that you want to share with our families about the process and what you suggest? Anybody can jump in. Well, I asked Maya um, if she had any quick tips, um, and she said to start early. So if you know exactly what you want, start early, because especially at Nicholson, it, it goes very, very quickly. And, and to piggyback on that. that. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to say I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to second that, um, even for off-campus housing, because um, the lodges, uh, certain kinds of them, like the cottages and the four and five bedrooms have already filled up for the furnished anyway. So I agree, start early. <clears throat> I wanted to add to that for our on-campus apartments that do typically fill pretty, pretty quickly uh, that we do have a wait list. Um, and so that opens um, shortly after apartment selection. And so students can get on and can enter their names on the wait list for certain apartment types. So let's say you got um, an ECA four bedroom, but you really wanted a Nicholson two bed, two bath. Um, you can get on those wait lists. Or if you weren't able to secure an apartment, you can get on the wait list. And again, we work all spring, all summer to get students into those apartment spaces. So if you stick with us and be patient, uh, we usually can get you in into an on-campus apartment space. But it is, it can be a bit of a, a mad dash feeling at first um, in February and March. But we just try to um, ask everybody to put their patience hat on, work with us. We're get, we're gonna we're gonna work with you, and it'll it'll all work out in the end. All right, y'all. Well, thank you so much. I want to thank our panelists and thank our team from Residential Life, Catherine and Mallory, for sharing such helpful information. Um, so if you, we did record this session. I want to share my screen now and so you can see where we'll be posting this. We also have some additional resources listed on our website. So if you go to lsu.edu slash family under the communications tab, you select webinars. It will bring you to this page and you can see the list of all of the webinars that we'll be hosting this semester. But at the bottom of the page under webinar resources, we have tons of information of what we've talked about today, including some additional information. So um, we have the link to Residential Life's website and that chart that we talked about comparing on versus off campus, link to that housing page. I know we've been sharing a lot in the chat, so we wanna put it in multiple places so that you can definitely come back and refer to this. Um, and then some other just general helpful tips um, to think about. So definitely check this out and our recording will be posted right here. So you'll see that uploaded tomorrow. Um, and let me share my other screen. I also want to go over just those additional uh, webinars that we'll be hosting. So we have our, uh, our dates listed here for the, the upcoming few in February, and we encourage you to join us. Our next one is going to be held in conjunction with our Center for Academic Success. Back in the fall, we did a kind of an overview of what those resources that the Center for Academic Success offers are, but now we're really going to focus on um, honing in on really how your tiger can have the best semester and be the most successful academically, you know, understanding time management, structure, organization. Maybe your tiger didn't do as well as they had hoped last semester. And so they really want to start this one off on the right foot. So we have lots of great information we'll be sharing next Tuesday, February 2nd. We'll also be joined by the Career Center for falling in love with your major or finding a major on February 9th. And then the last one will be, we'll talk 
all about family weekend and what that's going to look like. Family weekend is scheduled to be held March 5th through the 7th. And so we'll have some of our current families and students share a little bit of information about their perspective on the experience. And our office will talk about the logistics of that weekend. So you can check out our website to see all of those and get the Zoom links. We hope you will join us. We also hope you join our family association. So we have our families that are, are here today. We have Carmen Hughes and Ari Clay and also Jenny Marty are all part of our family association. And that's why they are panelists and are helping us with this. They're also part of our family council. And so if you're looking for a volunteer opportunity or way to take advantage of a lot of great, exciting benefits, we encourage you to check out our website to learn more and you can join at lsu.edu slash join. And then we want to do a quick little survey. So we want to hear and get your feedback about today's webinar. This is our first time hosting one. And it seems like it was a hit and you guys had a lot of questions. So we're, we're very thankful. Um, but we want to make this better for the future and, and give you all the information that you're looking for. So you can see that QR code on the screen if you hold your phone up to it. Um, before you actually, you know, your camera, you won't actually take a picture, but a little drop down will pop from the top or we're putting that direct link in the chat. So just take a moment to share your feedback there for us. I'll leave this on the screen for just a moment. And, uh, and then if you didn't get that, go ahead and look at the chat. You can click that direct link. And then finally, if you have questions, if you want to connect with any of our individual speakers, I saw a few of you trying to call out some of the panelists and ask more about their specific experience. If you have a question for any of our students, uh, or parents today, you can email us and we'll connect with them. If you have a question for residential life, you can also just email us directly if you'd like, um, and we can, we can forward that to them and work with Catherine and Mallory and their team. We encourage you to follow us on social media at uh, Facebook and Instagram, and we'll keep promoting more opportunities and information to make sure that you're in the know and we have helpful resources for you. So I just did a big quick recap. If anybody has any last minute questions that you want to throw in the Q&A or the chat, we're going to stick around for just a couple more minutes. But with that, I want to thank everyone so much for joining us. Thank our panelists and thank Residential Life again. And good luck in the search and the uh, off-campus or on-campus apartment housing process, whatever you decide. We know that your tiger will make the right decision and find a place that's a good home for them. So thank y'all so much. Have a wonderful evening and go Tigers!